I'd like to introduce you today to Dr. Phil Page, the Director of Research and Education for the TheraBand Academy. Today, Dr. Page will be talking to us about the TheraBand Academy, as well as the TheraBand Research Advisory Committee, known as TRAC. Thank you, Dr. Phil, for being with us today. Can you give me some background on the TheraBand Academy? Sure. The TheraBand Academy started back in 1999 when we got together with a group of clinicians and researchers to help decide how we could best use research to support the TheraBand product line and support evidence-based practice. Uh, when we got together and, and decided that we really needed to have a way of, of educating our clinicians, our customers, about how to use the products to support evidence-based practice. In other words, bringing research and evidence to how we're actually using the products because that helps us to better utilize our products and have a better clinical decision making. And so the TheraBand Academy started as an idea that had a website that would house all of the information like research and exercises and articles. But we go beyond that because we also have over 150 speakers around the world who are actually teaching other clinicians how to actually use the products with evidence-based practice using our workshop that we teach around the world, uh, Bands, Balls, and Balance. And what kind of uh, traffic are you seeing on the site? Uh, right now we have about 68,000 registered users. Uh, we're seeing about 12,000 visit visits um, a month, which is a pretty good um, usage. Um, the website has quite a few members from the physical therapy professions, chiropractic, occupational therapy, podiatry, massage therapy, but there's also quite a bit of patients and consumers that visit the site as well. And what does the system include? The Academy is actually housed around the, uh, the website, therabandacademy.com, and it's your portal, if you will, for all the research we have on our products. It has exercises, it has articles, it has insurance, coding and billing information, and it's, it's really the most comprehensive database of research and exercises for our products. The site's great because you can actually search for research or exercises based on a body part or a specific disease or condition that you may be interested in. So the, the website has a variety of ways that you can actually search for the information you're trying to find. Would a practitioner need to go there daily to stay on top of what's been updated? No, not really. Um, what the best way to keep updated is to actually subscribe to our blog at hygienicblog.com uh, where we provide regular updates to the research that's posted on the Academy as well as any other uh, things that we add to the Academy. It's real simple to go onto the Academy. All you do is log in or you can register for free and take advantage of the thousand uh, research articles or over 500 exercises that we have available for free. With all the buzz around websites and this newest social media craze, how do you stay current on keeping the website where it needs to be and staying connected and engaged to those that are coming to the site every day? Well, last year I noticed this trend towards more uh, social media and this interaction of people and, and discussing things. and so. What we did last year was actually started the TheraBand Academy blog, which is where we're going to be posting every week or so. We'll have new research updates. We'll update you on all the different uh, events that are going on. But the great thing is that we're also using Facebook. There's a TheraBand Academy Facebook, and we also uh, follow that on Twitter, and we have a YouTube uh, channel as well. So the TheraBand Academy is definitely moving towards the social media aspect of communicating with our customers. And can you give me some background on TRAC? The sure. The, the TheraBand Research Advisory Committee was also started back in 1999. We had our first meeting in New Orleans uh, with that group of researchers. And uh, over the past 12 years, we've evolved to have even more research that helps support our products. We also talk about some of the uh, research needs that are out there that we can help create a research agenda for. We talk about uh, product needs, new products. but. Uh, ultimately, we talk a lot about how to get that information out to the practicing clinician to take advantage of the information. Is a, um, a service or a, an advisory group like this unique to the industries in which TheraBand product is sold? Definitely. There are s some companies have these types of um, advisory committees, but I, I'm pretty sure that we're one of the only companies that has this dedicated group that focuses on research and helps really drive uh, our products towards evidence-based practice. And didn't you just have a recent session of the track group? Yeah, we had our 12th meeting in Gr Athens, Greece. We just got back from there and it was a, again, the, the continues to improve every year. It was a great meeting. We had uh, 16 participants from 
Europe, from America, from Canada. We had our first massage therapist there. Um, we talked a lot about research. We had 19 uh, research projects which were presented and you can actually go to the Academy website and download our proceedings of all the research that was presented there. What's been one of the most impactful research initiatives that came out of the group? We have a great group of researchers and clinicians uh, on track. Uh, probably the most impactful was a study by Tim Tyler, one of our track members uh, since uh, early in, uh, in 2000. And he did a study on tennis elbow with the TheraBand Flex Bar and found great results using a novel exercise that he had developed as a result of being in track. Uh, and that study took off and has done really well for us. But all of our researchers on track do a great job with impactful research. And some of the, the more recent stuff was showing that TheraBand type resistance is equivalent to isotonic resistance mm -hmm. or free weights. They have the same muscle activation. They have the same strength outcomes. So we have a really great group of people that are providing impactful research that drives practice. What's the benefit of showing that a resistance exercise is as effective as a machine or free weights? Well, that's a great question. You know, um, there's been some thoughts out there that elastic resistance isn't as good as free weights, and that's totally wrong. It, people don't really understand the mechanics and the biomechanics of elastic resistance. And, over the past 12 years, that's what I've spent most of my time doing, is trying to educate based on the research that I've done on elastic resistance and how it actually is similar to the typical types of isotonic resistance. But more than that, it's, it's practical because you don't need expensive machines, you don't need a lot of floor space, you don't need the expensive cost, it's portable, it's versatile, it's all these things. Now, free weights and isotonics do have their place, and uh, we're not saying that one is better than the other, but it's okay to go ahead and suggest elastic resistance is as effective. And so we have a lot of great uh, researchers that are providing information that helps, again, support uh, the TheraBand and BioFreeze product lines. What would be an example of a BioFreeze research study? Well, last year we had a great study from a track member, Bart Bishop, who looked at BioFreeze versus ice on neck pain and found that, for example, BioFreeze uh, was preferred by patients 9 out of 10 to ice on uh, neck pain and also reduced pain a lot better than using ice. So we are starting to see a lot more research coming out of track as it relates to BioFreeze. This year's event had um, a, a nice, probably the largest group that we've had. Um, we actually had our first massage therapist uh, as a member. So we, we've expanded our horizon on our research and what we talk about as as our markets and as our products evolve as well. Um, and we spent a lot of time talking about the actual research and how we can uh, promote it to support evidence-based practice uh, for the next year. And what's going to be next for the track group and academy? Well, they're going to go and start working on research projects for next year. Some of them are carrying on research that they had started earlier. But, you know, good research takes several years, uh, from three to five years sometimes. And so these projects tend to be ongoing and we're allowed to, we, we help each other on the group and we give feedback and before someone starts a new study, they'll collaborate with each other and kind of talk. And you have different professionals from clinical research to academic researchers that can kind of work together and provide the best type of uh, research project for next time. Sounds like the company is making a big investment in the research to drive product in the future. Well, they're definitely making a, a great investment. As I said, this is the 12th year. Um, they're definitely committed not just to the track meeting, but also supporting research outside of track. We also have 40 supported research projects around the world. Where we actually supply products for independent researchers to, to go about doing uh, their research projects. So we do a huge investment in research because we believe at the, at the end, the best part of, of our products is adding value to it and, and not just showing people how to use it, but how to use it better using evidence. Thank you, Dr. Page, for joining us today and sharing that information. We do look forward to the results of the research that is currently being done and look forward to speaking to you again. Thank you. And thank you for joining us today.